Right, greetings folks. My name's Ming Lord, uh, also known as Ming One in, in uh, on Reddit space circles. Uh, I'm going to do a a video showing the uh, the CRS, the so-called Cargo V Supply Mission Number Eleven, uh, and it happens to be visible 15-20 minutes after launch um, t uh, this evening. Or all being well, this is the June the first I'm talking about. So I'm going to show you um, some possible passes. There's two predictions. Um, there's some uncertainty as to the correct orbit uh, when, once the spacecraft is finished firing its rockets, but before it starts setting itself up to uh, approach the space station in a few days. So you'll see um, a prediction called Calc Sky Hybrid. That's uh, in, in average about 90 seconds ahead of uh, a prediction done by uh, a guy in the past for previous missions, and I've labelled that as uh, TS Kelzo, even though the actual prediction itself was done by uh, Marco Langbrowick. So uh, here we go. So first of all, I'm going to do a pass from Cork. Uh, the first one I'll be doing a bit more detail, and then the rest I'll I'll whip through a little bit quicker. So we're in Cork. All being well, yep, so it shows at the bottom here. This is Stellarium, a free astronomy um, uh, program that you can use. Uh, in the the um, description of this video, I'll maybe put the, uh, the information that you need to to do this for yourself. But uh, heads up, it's actually fairly complicated and uh, more, probably more of a pain than it's worth. Alright, so uh, we'll just close that down for now. So. This is uh, in universal time, so you're gonna have to do a little time conversion yourself. Um, so it's look, this shows at 22:14, so it's 14 minutes past 10 tonight. Uh, and as you can see, Mr. Kelsey's prediction's already firing away. So let's just zip time back a little bit. And there is uh, my prediction, Ming Sky Hybrid. Uh, so it's already up. So let's whip it back by there we go so you can see it's just started to, uh, to come above the horizon luckily you've got the moon and Jupiter which are very bright objects to to use to uh, to guide yourself as to to where to look so once the SpaceX rockets finished firing its rockets and it's hopefully landed by now and there's great, great cheers going on uh, that that would have been about um, seven or eight minutes prior to this so it gives just enough time to go outside and uh, and get yourself orientated correctly um, so we can speed up time a little bit just to get to you can see it's going fairly high like a, a decent high path from a uh, cork almost like overhead really uh, at some point it's going to go disappear into the shadow of the earth so and then Mr. Kelzo's prediction is just starting to rise uh, at 2213 uh, 2213 minutes so the truth could lie anywhere between these two so uh, and if you could get a timing of when when uh, the the, the, uh, the spacecraft passes uh, a bright star that you know if you if you're good at if you know your sky that'd be quite helpful to pin this down for future launches as to as what the exact uh, timings of these uh, these passes are uh, so yeah for example we're not past uh, a line between Arcturus and another right another star like, like the uh, handle of the uh, the plow there um, that could have been useful information so it's about to disappear I'd imagine into the shadow of the earth uh, if I click on it, 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 it says it's visible because not only does it have to be above the horizon, it has to be uh, illuminated by the sun this is why this uh, this launch is particularly good because it should be occurring, occurring within the hour or so a couple of hours of, of sunset for a large fraction of, of northern Europe so it's still visible, this is why uh, Ireland uh, does pretty well on these uh, th these particular missions because the the high point of the orbit essentially heads o over Ireland, um, there's, there's no way around it. I mean, in the, in the old space shuttle days, um, some of the the abort sites for the space shuttle, there we go, so it was eclipsed just then. So that's like 22, 14, and 45 seconds thereabouts. Uh, and then 
Mr. Kelso's prediction, it's it's heading, you know, it's virtually in a line horizontally with the moon around 2215. So you're not going to be growing a beard waiting for these two predictions to pass. It's you're looking at a minute, two minutes difference between the between them. Um, it's a nice vir virtual meteor there. So speed this up. So like I say, past Arcturus, for example, you could make a timing. Uh, take a timing for when that occurs, like relative to your horizon. Just say it was directly above Arcturus at so and so time. Note your exact location, and this could be useful for satellite watchers to to create a more accurate orbit um, in the the half an hour or hour after after the the mission's launched. So this is uh, d disappears similarly. So you've got a decent, you know, good couple of minutes of, of visibility as thing, and the, there should be the uh, the spacecraft itself, the trailing rocket. So that's two brightish objects, um, and there's two covers for the solar panels that it has on it. So there should be maybe up to four objects all moving along in in tandem. And it goes disappeared 22, 17, and 20 odd seconds. So yeah, that's pretty decent. So let's whip the clock back. So, okay, so my my only prediction was 2211. Yeah, you know, when it first gets a, a decent amount above the horizon, um, every degree or so that this uh, this spaceship's rising, it's actually getting radically closer to us. So if you look at um, here, where are we? Range it's 600 kilometers at that point because you're looking low through a vast amount of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, but as you can see, the distance is uh, is so that the side effect of this is it's going to get quite a lot brighter as you get out of the murk of the atmosphere, which um, um, causes the brightness to to be diminished um, quite intensively when you're below like five, ten degrees. But once you, it gets uh, up to a decent height, um, like say the height of the moon, um, it, yeah, it's thirty odd degrees. Um, for uh, reference, a uh, pair of 10 by 50 binoculars, yeah, you're looking at a field of view, uh, maybe about yay big. So when I go to different locations, you may well see the um, the space station, the uh, space station, the CRS capsule um, appearing to, cl to close pretty close to the moon. So um, it might well be that if you have a pair of binoculars on a, a, a decent stand. Uh, and use the moon to focus. That is probably your best bet um, in in order to get a decent view of this thing, because it's going to be moving pretty pretty swiftly, essentially. So there you go. It just passed past Arcturus at 13 seconds. Anyway, so enough uh, digress behaviour. So what's on next on my magic list? So we're going to go to Wexford. Pardon me. A little burp there. Uh, So from Wexford, which is uh, oh, always do this wrong. My uh, astronomy program of choice is Starry Night. A program called Starry Night. I'm only using this because uh, it's uh, available to a lot of people. So, um, am I spelling that wrong? No, Wexford. Huh? That's a knackered thing. Somewhat. I thought. So okay, we're going to have to uh, not have Wexford for now because I'll have to go look it up on a, a mount. Let's try Limerick, see if it's got Limerick. I didn't actually, uh, it didn't occur to me. United States. Oh, this is all going horribly wrong. Right, so we might have to downscale the amount of uh, sites for Ireland that I do at the moment. Um, Dublin. I've done one from Dublin the other day, but this has got more. In updated information. So uh, Dublin. So, so if we stick time forward, there we go, twenty two eleven. Twenty two hours and eleven minutes. It just pokes its head up. And uh like I say your range there is like eight hundred odd uh, kilometers. And uh, speed time a little bit. Oh, so there you see, it passes very close to the moon, uh, and there's a good chance that with the uh, uncertainties in this orbit determination, 
uh, that it could well be uh, be transiting the moon if you're really lucky. Oh, I certainly wouldn't travel a great distance to, uh, to try and view this if it, if it said that it was 20 miles away from Dublin. I wouldn't do make that journey unless you 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 really feel uh, that potentially wasting your your petrol because this could well be off. Uh, either side but there we go so 22 hours 12 minutes I'm just going to start saying 12 minutes past as a, as a, a shortcut here it, it passes according to my uh, my prediction so that's going to be a fairly easily visible and, and uh, a bit of a highlight for uh, if you're interested in astronomy so that's going to be disappearing into the shadow and there comes Mr. Kelso uh, like, a, like a minute uh, so, uh, so it's getting into a similar position relative to the moon. As you say, you can see that it just predicts it doesn't do as decent a job, in my opinion, at locating the spacecraft along its orbit. The actual orbit itself is very, very similar. So, according to that prediction, it's going to be more like 15 minutes uh, after the hour. So it's essentially like 20, um, 20 minutes after launch. Now, this is complicated somewhat by the fact that the launch. Um, these predictions are, are based on the launch occurring at five, five to ten. Uh, if the, the the cargo ship goes up like fifty-five seconds a minute later than twenty-one fifty-five, uh, these predictions need moving by appropriate amount of time. So if it takes off at twenty-one fifty-six instead of twenty-one fifty-five, it will be a minute later, uh, and it'll, the way these things work, it won't be going up early. That's for sure. I just missed the uh, missed it disappearing. But okay, so it disappears about 22, 14, 38 seconds according to my prediction. Mr. Kelso's track disappears, and apparently, to people that have seen this in the past, it's actually fairly bright. It's, uh, you think um, it'd be faint considering it's like a relatively small. There we go, 22. I've, I've broken my own room. 17 minutes past the hour thereabouts it disappeared so I've just brought it back slightly and that's disappeared into the shadow of the earth but like I say from this this point the sun has only recently set in uh, in Ireland so I was going to do uh, a variety of sites I'll go for Belfast in uh, Northern Ireland there as just to get a, a decent if your viewing site is between any of these two then you'll have to Essentially, guess at where it's going to be, but uh, we'll try and prevent as much as oh, prevent as much guessing as possible uh, in terms of the rough locations. Like I say, these predictions could well be off in the the timing, but the location should be fairly fairly decent. So we go 22 hours 11 minutes past. So. so So essentially, you can see that on the different viewing sites, the uh, the spacecraft seems to take a lower track uh, the, fur the further north you are of its of its uh, of its orbit, which yeah makes sense. And if you was really far south of uh, Ireland, it's possible that it should um, we start to go low in the, in the, uh, the northern sky because uh, you're, you're directly south of the track rather than north of the track if you're in the northern part of Ireland. So, <coughs> so, just showing you the the rough outline of its path. Um, there we go. It disappeared at 22:14 and 45 seconds thereabouts. And then Mr. Kelso's Kel prediction, yeah, it's south of the moon. That's essentially 15 minutes past. F this is from Belfast. Uh, oh no! In fact, it's, it's eclipse. So I'm lying to you. So this show. Oh no, good, I'm not lying here, it's visible. I was going to say, I thought it had disappeared into the shadow pr earlier because it would be north. But uh, well, thankfully, this is going to be visible, assuming the, the weather plays ball. So it zips across, there's Saturn low down there. Um, so again, that could be an observation point, saying it's directly north of Saturn at a certain number of min minutes and seconds past the hour from 
your precisely determined location and it disappeared that's uh, 17 minutes past and uh, a few seconds 20 seconds say so let's see if we can find anywhere else in Ireland see if uh, I'm not sure if you can zoom in on this map which would have been nice to actually so you have to do a horrible uh, approximation did we try Galway? <coughs> let's try Galway let's try typing it in the correct hole yeah that's disappointing how uh, no it doesn't doesn't like Galway so uh, that I'll have to do I guess uh, for now because uh, I would have to go and let's see try Sligo Ah, I like Sligo. Let's okay. We'll go. We'll go for Sligo. So five, one more time. So we're in Sligo now. You're getting the uh, pattern now. I'll speed things up so this video isn't a thousand hours long. I've already been rambling probably far too much. So it's got a decent height above the horizon at eleven minutes past and forty odd seconds. If it's forward. To oh, pressing the wrong button that will help. So it's directly south of the, the moon. Oh, you get the idea. At uh, 12 minutes past and a few seconds, and this is looks like it passes pretty near to Jupiter. So if you um, you could use that as a you know, if your camera set up in advance, you could pick up. Jupiter and the Moon, and maybe doing a timed exposure, all sorts of um, possibilities. Um, so this is uh, great stuff. Definitely south of Arcturus, at 13, 13 minutes fast. Here comes Mr. Calzo's prediction. So what I'll do is I'll just whip this uh, down into the, into Eclipse Land, where it's disappeared in the sun. So it's still visible, 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 visible. Disappeared 2214 minutes and 49 seconds a few minutes earlier. And then at that time, according to this other prediction, it, so there we go 20, 14 minutes past and 40 seconds past the moon. Like I say, the uh, if you plotted these two these paths, they're following the same exactly the same orbit on the sky to, uh, to a visual observer, uh, just the the other, other orbit is slightly uh, behind the other. There we go. And this appears then 2217 minutes and 20 seconds. So, yeah, that'll wrap this up for now. Uh, I may well do a, a more detailed video if I can get one done uh, the rest of the day. So, I hope that's useful to you guys over in Ireland. Uh, clear skies. Right. Just taking the time to get this thing stopped recording. Bye bye.